this all-you-can-eat Brazilian barbecue buffet is $65. So worth it. The meat is of supreme quality. Well, you see this on the streets. This is at Braza Churrascaria. How do they do it? I'm glad you asked. I'll show you how the food tastes like. And if it looks like something you want to try one day, I will tell you my secret, showing you the best way to spend your calories. Does it sound good? Let's get started. Question for you. What do you call an all-you-can-eat garlic restaurant? Buffet the Vampire Slayer. Right. These prawns are cut through the back, brushed with a butter mix that contains garlic, capsicum, chili, lemon, and salt. Smokiness from charcoal fire together with the butter mix are aromatic. It's captivating. When you bite into the juicy prawn flesh, cooked to perfection, so juicy. The fresh prawn flavor is deepened by the salt, brightened by the tang lemon, heightened by the charcoal garliciness and chili. Such an exhilarating bite, make you wanna eat more. Tip for you: If it sounds like something you like, make sure you ask for at least five the first time you're offered, for reasons that will become clear later. I will come back to this at the end. The squid is definitely on the tender side. Seasoning is decent. If you're a squid fan, you will enjoy this. The lamb rump has been marinated in rosemary, lemon, and garlic, then sprinkled with rock salt right before cooking. Wow, super tender, belly need to chew. So much lamb juice in your mouth. It mixes with the seasoning beautifully. What a bite. Note that the lamb flavor is on the strong side. If you're sensitive to the gaminess, ask for only a small slice to try. If you normally don't mind it, I recommend loading up on it to at least two big slices. This is very important information. This chef has got the most critical and toughest job in the kitchen. He single-handedly controls the timing of more than 10 different skewers, all requiring different heat levels and cooking times. While keeping all of the info in his head, he has to constantly monitor the whole restaurant, making judgments on how long it is before the waiters come back to him for a new batch. He then places the skewers either close to the fire, getting ready, or away from the fire to avoid overcooking. How tender the meat tastes in your mouth, therefore the fate of this restaurant all depend on his accuracy in judgments. Well done on the lamb! My hat off to you, chef! Let's look at how good a job he does with 5 beef dishes, going from my least favorite to most favorite. Ranking at number 5 is tri-tip with provolone. Provolone is an Italian cheese. Tri-tip or triangle tip is below the sirloin, aka bottom sirloin. Normally, I love cheese and I love steak, but this combination doesn't quite work. Also, the slice I got was a bit dry. Maybe because I got the outer layer, it is interesting to try a traditional Brazilian dish though. Tip for you. I recommend asking for a slice from the inside. It's less likely to be overcooked and you don't need to worry about missing out on the seasonings of the outer layer. The cheese and natural beef will make are flavorful enough. Plus, there are plenty of good sauces to choose from. Coming at number four is flank. It lies forward of the tri-tip, being marinated in garlic, oregano, extra virgin olive oil. It's cut against the grain at the table to reduce the length of the muscle fibers and to make chewing easier. It doesn't melt in the mouth, but super juicy. With each chewing action, more and more beef juice is released. Then it's wonderfully enhanced by the funky charcoal garlic flavor. Ranking at number three is rum cap or piconha. This is the most popular cut in any Brazilian barbecue. Sitting on top of the hip, it's not an exerted muscle. Tender with a layer of fat that flavors and moistens the meat as it cooks. So flavorful that no seasoning is required. Only sprinkled with rock salt before cooking. So tender, so tender, so tough. <sighs> I've got a slice with no fat on it. My company, however, was lucky. Got lots of fat. Despite my bad experience, I'm still ranking at number three for you because I will show you my game plan to beat the luck. Jeez, I wish there was a video for me before. Ranking at number two, garlic rum cap. This time I get so much fat. Wow, the garlic elevates the fatty beef flavor brilliantly. Fun fact, you know why fat often makes or breaks a good steak? Fat sitting on top traps the moisture in the lean section, reducing the evaporation during the heating process, preserving the meat juice. Fat itself also has this render in the mouth property due to its melting point. It melts on your tongue, coats your palate, allowing various compounds to stay in contact with taste buds for longer, intensifying and prolonging the taste experience. Question for you, why did the skeleton go to a barbecue? For the spare ribs! Coming at number one, beef rib. One of my favorite cuts. Marinated in pear juice, maple syrup, soy sauce, garlic, sesame oil, and cooked low and slow for hours. Look at how easily those bones come off. Promising you'll be rewarded for your adventure. Lean section is soft and tender. Tendon has been reduced to almost gelatinous texture, but still has its delightful chewiness. The fat melty and flavors the whole bite. Beef rib has got the most complex texture out of all. Dip it into this Brazilian chili sauce. Wow, now my life is complete. The spicy tanginess cut through the fat, brightens the meat flavor while giving it some heat. Perfect. Question for you. Why don't chickens tell jokes to their eggs? Because it might crack them up. 
This is chicken breast with bacon. The marinade recipe was from Chef Andre's mom recipe books. Breast is marinated in mustard, honey, ketchup, and in garlic, vinegar, salt, pepper, then wrapped with bacon. The bacon offers umame while reducing breast moisture loss during heating. Interesting combo. The least dry and least bland chicken breast has ever tasted to me. The chicken thigh fillet is marinated in natural yogurt, lemon, garlic, and cumin seeds. Charred on the edges, flavorful. Chicken hearts, not the juiciest I've ever tried, but on the big and tender side. Texture is firm and tree. Marinade flavors have penetrated the meat. Fun fact, chicken or egg? Do you know which actually came first? The answer is obvious once I explain to you the theory of evolution. Don't worry, only in one sentence. Birds evolved from reptiles, so the first bird must come out of an egg laid by a reptile. There you go, answer is egg. Settled. You can sound smart to your friends next time the topic comes up. Tip for you, unless you're a fervent chicken lover, I think Brazza does a much better job on beef, lamb, and pork. Let's look at five pork dishes from my least favorite to most favorite. Coming in number five is sausage. There are pork shoulder, pork leg, garlic, funnel, chili, salt, and pepper in it. The texture is on the dry side, but flavor is not bad. The spices does not overpower the porky flavor, but complement it. Tip for you, try not to spend too many calories on this. Juicier options are coming. Coming in number four is pork neck. This is probably the first time I tried pork neck. Interesting texture. Have you tried a good Chinese char siu before? Texture is similar, firm and consistent, a little crunchy. Having been marinated in maple syrup, red wine, cinnamon, cloves, garlic, sumac, the flavors have diffused into the meat. Not bad. Coming in number three is pork leg. Look at that perfectly caramelized edges. Wow, it's crispy with a hint of sweetness, an explosion of flavors from lemon juice, garlic, parsley, and black pepper. Wonderfully balanced off by the bland meat. The skin in this case literally makes or breaks the dish. The meat covers try to accompany every slice with a bit of skin, but it's not always achievable. If you don't receive any, definitely ask for it. Otherwise, you're missing out big time. Coming at number two is the classic pork belly with crackling skin. Cooked in white wine, star anise, garlic, onion, salt, and pepper first to feed the meat vibrant flavors. Then moved onto barbecue grill to bestow upon the skin woody and charcoal aromas while evaporating the moisture to make it crispy. Yep, it lives up to expectations. So crunchy. Oh. As it dissolves in your saliva, the heavenly millard fragrance escapes into the back of your throat, up into your nose. Mmm, exactly what I was looking for in a crackling pork skin. The only reason it doesn't make to number one is that I wish the meat was less thick to achieve a better skin to meat ratio. Coming at number one, yay! It's pork ribs, one of my favorite cuts. The meat is tender, easily come off the bone. Barbecue sauce made in house is perfect. Way better than these sometimes overly sweet store bought ones. The depth of flavor of the caramelized sauce complements the meat marvelously. The tanginess reflects off the porkiness. The sauce's smokiness echoes the meat's charcoal aroma. The sweetness is moorish, so piquant. That sometimes I feel the pork rib is just the media carrying the vibrancy in the sauce. But would I enjoy it equally if it's on an average steak? Probably not. Pork ribs are a special cut. Fun fact, you know why bones make meat tastier? Muscles are red lean meat attached to bones through a connective tissue called tendon, which is mostly collagen. It is the slippery white film-like layer directly next to the bone. The white stuff at the front and that goes around the bone 360 degrees. When it's cooked for a long time, it reduces to a gelatinous texture and melts in your mouth, giving you a pork fat-like mouthfeel. I don't know if pork ribs are better or beef ribs. I can't decide. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Next chapter is side dishes. You might be thinking, why is there a section on sides when meat should be the style attraction of a Brazilian barbecue? I was thinking about the same. They simply stand out too much, even better than the meat. You will see why very soon. Even if you're here for the meat, it's worth trying a side or two. Fun way to explore another culture. Plus, you get to pretend you're having a balanced meal. I love you. Is that you or the wine talking? It's me talking to the wine. Brazza has a good cachaça selection. It's a Brazilian national alcoholic beverage, a distilled spirit from fermented sugar cane juice. I ordered a passion fruit cachaça with condensed milk. <sighs> Cool, refreshing, sweet, citrusy with subtle hint of alcohol taste. Contrasts perfectly with the salty, greasy flavors of the meat while cleansing your palate. Recommend for ladies. Sauces are essential in a Brazilian barbecue because cuts are much thicker than traditional steaks, so the seasoning largely stays on the surface. Depending on the skin to meat ratio, you might not have enough seasoning. Here are my recommended sauces. Ranking at number three is red wine roux. Beef stock reduces red wine to thickness consistency of gravy. Velvety with bitter endotone. A bit astringent on the tongue. Nothing too special. It's okay. 
Okay, ranking number two, Malagueta Chili. It has roasted red capsicum, onion, garlic, oregano, bay leaves, lime juice, and olive oil. I like it has some heat. Its tanginess cuts through the fattiness. I do wish the nuanced flavors could stand up to the spiciness more. Coming on number one, chimichurri sauce is made with fresh herbs, including parsley, coriander, and oregano. When you first put it in your mouth, herbal and olive oil fragrances travel to the back of your throat and up into your nose, heating your smell receptors, grabbing your attention. Then the oil coats your mouth as you work on the crunchy diced herbs and mix it with the meat. Acidity from the vinegar breaks through, granting the palate relief by balancing off the fattiness while brightening the meat's umami and the sauce's complex herbal notes. This Brazilian chili is ranked as a number zero for three reasons. Firstly, they're absolutely delicious if you can take the heat. Second, while the other three sauces are not included in the buffet, this one is. Thirdly, even though they aren't strictly speaking sauces, they can be. Having been preserved in vinegar and salt, they're packed with flavors. It's plump. When your teeth break it, the juice explodes in your mouth, releasing the fermented depth of flavor. Subtly sweet, tangy, savory, and spicy. Exquisitely balanced. It elevates everything it goes with. When something is this good at a buffet, I order three servings at a time. And when that's not enough, I order them online too. If you have to have some veggies with every meal, like me, these two babies are at your service. It occupies too precious stomach space for some, but for me, it helps to eat more meat by keeping my taste buds interested. If you have some calorie budget for carbs, here are four options ranking from least to most recommended. Coming at number four, this Brazilian rice arrived at our table uninvited. The waitresses are too busy for us to get their attention. What would you do in situations like this? Let me know in the comment section below. I decided to make the most use of what life throws at me. Dig in! Smell garlic aroma on top of the rice. Interesting. I like the way you think, Brazilians. By the way, if you see this, get ready to have lots of rice or lots of water. This halloumi cheese is way too salty. Coming at number three. Great job on this garlic bread, Jeff. It's everything one would expect from it. Bread is fluffy and warm. Garlic butter and herbs make it super fragrant. The bonus Parmesan cheese offers fruitiness and nuttiness. If I'm not controlling my carb intake, I can down loaves of these. I have done it before as a teenager with unbeatable metabolic rate. Good times. Coming at number two is this cassava chips. Crunchy, but yield to pressure. Soft on the inside. Compared with potato wedges, the crusty skin is thicker and area. Flavor is more complex. It has an earthy tone, slightly sweet and nutty. Plus, who can resist something that's tastier than potato chips? But also healthier, perhaps? Fun fact, potato chips are often associated with fast food chains and labeled as junk food. Cassava chips haven't been talked about much. Is it innocent? Comparing the nutrition value of the two, potato has slightly more vitamins, minerals, and proteins, the stuff good for you. Less of carbohydrates and fats, the stuff bad for you. However, cassava absorbs less oil in the deep frying process than potato. So which one is healthier depending on which measure you take? Overall, cassava chips are not necessarily better than potato chips. Everything in moderation is the way to go, including moderation itself. So good. Coming at number one, woohoo! It's cheese bread. This is the best bread I've ever tasted. Exterior is crusty, inside is subtly cheesy but springy. It's made from tapioca flour, a type used in making bubble tea pearls. It's bland, therefore ready to absorb any flavor you feed to it. In this case, it's the wonderful cheesy umame. Melted cheese binds to the fluffy bread in a way that moistens from inside out. The warm, airy pockets are filled with the cheesy aroma. The more you chew on it, the more fragrance is released, filling your mouth and nose. Mmm, if I could down two loaves of of the garlic bread, I can down 10 loaves of these. Note that these aren't included in the buffet. First two are complimentary. If you would like more, it'll be $7.50 for six. Last category, you guessed it, it's dessert, yay! This is banana fritters. Crumbly shell, creamy banana mesh inner. The great contrast of textures remind me of fried ice cream. The heating process has caused the fruit's sugars to caramelize, amplifying banana's distinct fruity note and natural sweetness. No trace of unpleasant mealiness or astringency whatsoever. What a great way to enjoy bananas. This is barbecue pineapple, as I am anticipating biting into it, my saliva is already rushing in, expecting sharp sourness. Wait, is this pineapple I'm eating? Where's the sourness? Completely floored. All I taste is the fragrant fruitiness complemented by the caramelized sweetness and cinnamon. Heat vaporizes the moisture, giving more concentrated pineapple flavor. Heat has also broken down the cell walls, tenderizing the flesh, transforming a normally crunchy pineapple into soft and juicy. This dish always catches me off guard, always the most memorable. The surprise factor and the fact of eating it at the end of the meal might have something to do with it. What a way to end my meal. The citrusiness washes down the heavy, savory meal perfectly while leaving me wanting more. If you see this, be careful. The inside of a pineapple is more sour than the outside. It will be different. You could either wait for another round. There's a catch to that. See in the next chapter or ask the waitress for your favorite cut. However, use the opportunity smartly as I'm pretty sure you will have several favorites. Finally, my secret tips for you. Tip number one, new batch of skewers come out at this location of the restaurant. Sitting near the start of the waiter's trip ensures you're having the option to ask for your 
favorite cut of the meat before it runs out. Tip number two, they only offer the same skewer once and sometimes twice to your table. When a good cut of meat arrives, load up on it. You might not get a second chance, especially with the popular ones. How do I know which ones are popular? Aha, uh -huh. remember I asked you to take note earlier? This is why. But this video will always be here for you to watch again. Tip number three, the most expensive tastier cuts are served at the end. Make sure you save some calories for them. Then follow tip two. Tip four, at the start, your side orders will come quickly. But service will slow down as the restaurant gets busy at peak hours. If any non-barbecue items in the size chapter look good to you, try to order them early. Tip five, individual experience of the restaurant will vary depending on the chef on duty, his performance on the day, the cut you get from your meat cover. However, from my 10 visits, the average quality is high and the safe four dishes that have never failed are the pork rib, beef rib, prawns, and cheese bread. Tip six, after you eat the buffet once, know what you like, you can get even better value by going a la carte. A la carte options are limited to dining in, but they do a la carte takeaways on their website and on Deliveroo. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, smash hard on the thumbs down and maybe tell me in the comment section what you don't like about it.